Well, hello and good evening, everybody, and welcome to this webinar on European franchising. It's my absolute honor to serve as chairman today, and I would like to extend my thank you to um, Index and the team at Franchise Talk for making this webinar possible. So today, I'm Carl Reader, and I'm delighted to be joined Epi and Carlos, and I will share with you just a bit of background on each of those in just a moment. Um, but in the meantime, if you're watching via the webinar or perhaps through the watch party on Facebook, then please do submit your questions because we've got a really good schedule lined up. So I will be sharing for a, for a brief moment the background on European franchising. And then both Giuseppe and Carlos will be taking 15 minutes to talk through their own businesses and to share with you some of the insights that they've had along the way. So to give you some background on the amazing speakers we've got today, um, Giuseppe Bergdoni is the General Manager of Worldwide Development, Boxes, etc. And he'll be talking about how Mailboxes, etc. delivers franchise success during the pandemic. So since May 1999, Giuseppe has been covering different positions at mailboxes, etc. Store manager, supervisor, and retail network manager in Spain, being the last country manager for MB Italy. With all of his experience, he got the opportunity to know how the business works in different areas and also in two different countries. And since April 2016, he's responsible for expanding MBE to further countries where the brand isn't yet represented and supporting the development of the master licensees that run them. Now, that sounds like a fantastic CV to me. Giuseppe, you don't look old enough, um, but I'm staggered that you've managed to um, rack up all of that experience whilst looking so young. And next, we've got Carlos Vidal. So Carlos is the Vice President of Enterprise at Jeff in Spain. He's a 25 plus year veteran and international expert in the franchising sector. He has served in some of the most renowned leading multinational companies in various industries, from food to personal services, with brands such as McDonald's, Yum Brands, who own Pizza Hut, KFC and Taco Bell, Dunkin' Brands, which we know as Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins, Presto and Orange Theory Fitness, before joining Jeff, where he currently has the role of VP of Enterprise, with a strong business development and operations background. Throughout his career, Carlos has been directly responsible for the development of more than 2,000 openings, the acquisition of over 300 new franchise partners, and innumerable market openings worldwide. So, as you imagine, I shine into insignificance compared to my esteemed. I'm chairman at multi award winning franchise accounting firm DT. So DNT operates in the UK, looking after global brands. We work with about 150 franchisors and 3,000 franchisees. I'm the author of a franchising handbook, which was published by Hodder. I've served as affiliate chairman and a board member of British Franchise Association. And I've spoken globally to franchising audiences about best practice in franchising and have worked personally with countless household name brands. I've been recognised as one of the 20 faces of franchising by What Franchise Magazine. I judge quite a few of the awards and regularly contribute to the franchising press. So that's enough introduction about ourselves. Let's dive into some of the education here. And I'm going to share with you my very simple slides here. And this is it. I hope that you can see the slides that I'm sharing here. But this is all like this is um, what we're talking about here. We're talking about Europe and European franchising. And for me, it's a little bit challenging to um, to talk about European franchising when actually Europe as a concept isn't necessarily defined. Now, I apologize to all of the audience. I'm being told my slides aren't showing at the moment. So please bear with me. There we go. You should hopefully be seeing my slides now. Mary, can you please confirm? I can't see Mary and I can't see the chat box. Just say not if you can see my slide. Well, 
Thumbs up. Perfect. Uh, so, I'm sorry, I don't think so. It is the slides. I think it's just the welcome note that you are sharing at the moment. The welcome note. You can't see slide two, a map of Europe. No, no. I think you have to share it again. Okay, no problem. I do apologize, everybody, for for this. Let me... Technical hiccups. Don't we love them? Okay, so we should now be sharing a um, map of Europe. Perfect. Excellent, excellent. So um, the challenge when talking about franchising in Europe is, first of all, defining what is Europe. Because while some of us might think of the European Union and some of us might think of certain chunks of Europe, it actually embraces 50 different countries and 100 languages. So there's a number of different definitions around Europe as a concept. So we can see here the, um, the states in green are the current members of the European Union. Um, however, there are 50 countries, 100 languages, and that, that's not the only difference in um, what's going on in Europe. You know, there's different languages, there's different currencies, there's different taxation, there's different cultures, there's different legislation. So Europe as a whole has to be seen through the lens of being 50 different countries that work with each other in differing levels of cooperation. Now, I can speak for my fellow um, countrymen in the United Kingdom that not only do we not necessarily get on with each other at times, but also um, we perhaps have a fractious relationship with the rest of the EU as it stands at the minute. And there are numerous dynamics like that throughout Europe that you'll need to be clear on. Um, but when it comes to franchising, the governance of franchising within Europe is managed by national franchising organisations. So, for example, the British Franchise Association, the French Franchise Federation, uh, the German Franchise Association and so on. Now, they tend to subscribe to the European Franchising Federation, which is a member of the World Franchising Council. However, the individual associations are also directly members of the World Franchising Council. So if you're confused, you're as confused as me. The franchising industry within Europe hosts well over 10,000 brands. It's probably closer to about 15,000 now. Um, and many brands within Europe will actually franchise internationally, but not domestically. So some examples from my home nation of the United Kingdom would be Debenhams and Wagamamas. These are brands that will franchise overseas, but will operate on a corporately company-owned basis within the UK. And there's numerous examples of that across Europe. And there's a few um, standout trends that I've noticed in my um, years of franchising as well. I've, um, I've spent time traveling the globe, visiting various um, franchisors, but also franchise exhibitions, franchise conferences, and getting to know um, the various and organizations behind franchising and very generally the further west that you go the more that franchising reflects what we see in the united states and as we move east particularly towards eastern europe such as um, poland slovakia and um, romania etc uh, franchising is perhaps more of a partnership approach the standouts that i see in the region and um, perhaps when dealing with European franchisors, some of the things that you need to be conscious of, region that I'd like to pull out is Turkey. So I had the great pleasure of um, attending the uh, Istanbul franchise exhibition probably two or three years ago now. And Turkey acts very much as the gateway between Europe and the Middle East for franchising. Um, the exhibitions have a vast number of franchisors and there's a mix of cultures and types of franchises and it really is a good gateway into the rest of Europe. The second standout which you will need to be aware of because if you perform any due diligence on franchising in Europe it will stand out like a sore thumb is Luxembourg. Now Luxembourg is um, perhaps the home of franchising at the moment but this is pretty much due to the tax treaties that are available to Luxembourg and the fact that intellectual property and taxation on um, IP and the licensing of IP 
is very low compared to the rest of Europe. So Luxembourg will stand out much in the same way that Delaware stands out in the USA. Other thing that I touched on very briefly earlier on is um, about some of the issues within nations within Europe. And again, it's important to view each nation in its own right. So we could even look as far down as the United Kingdom and look at the relationship between England and Scotland, which whilst on any map that you might look at, such as this map here, they might appear to be bundled up into one country. However, they really do act as two separate countries within one. And there's a number of examples of that throughout Europe. So if I was to leave you with a takeaway on how to, I guess, kick off your research around Europe and how to understand how Europe works, I would say that you need to treat it as a land mass rather than as a political organisation. It's certainly not a... Um, conglomerate of states such as the United States, there are 50 different countries and 100 different languages. And likewise, there's probably even more cultures and even more ways of doing things. You will find that certain nations, I mean, France as a standout, have legislation for franchising. Other countries such as UK and Germany don't. So you need to be um, very cautious of the differences between the two. Uh, but perhaps most importantly, enjoy your research into Europe. I'm a, I am a huge fan of what Europe has done insofar as franchising. We've adopted a, I believe, a different approach to the United States. We adopted franchising probably 10, 20 years later than the USA. And some regions such as Poland and the Czech Republic adopted far later. Um, Czech Republic, for example, just started adopting franchising back in the early 90s compared to the UK, probably in the 70s. So we are later adopters of franchising, but I believe that we've made it our own and we do things in a very ethical way. The European Franchise Federation um, has a very strong code of ethics that the national associations adhere to. And best of luck with your journey. Now, as I touched on at the start of this, before the hiccup of the slides, we will be fielding questions. So I'm sure that you have questions for either myself, Giuseppe or Carlos. So please feel free to put them into the um, question tabs. We will allocate 15 minutes at the end for questions. And Giuseppe, I would now like to hand over to you to talk about mailboxes, etc. Thank you very much, Carl, for uh, your uh, introduction. I appreciate it. And thank you very much to Index and Franchise Store to give me this opportunity. I'm really pleased and honored to be here with you. Let me share my screen. OK. Uh, can you see it? Perfect. Thank you very much. All right, so not a lot to say after the uh, Carl uh, introduction about myself, just to mention uh, again that I've been working for this company in the last 21 years, so I know the business pretty well, and also in uh, different countries, such as Italy and Spain, which gave to me you know, the capability to identify opportunities also in the country where we are not based uh, yet. Um, regarding mailboxes, etc., um, we offer different services, okay, and we are one of the largest network of uh, retail service centers. We offer shipping, logistics, printing, marketing, and communication solution to both to business and private customers. Just a second. I don't know why it doesn't allow me to move forward. OK, so it <laughs> the screen doesn't move. Looks like I have a problem with my PC which basically doesn't respond. Uh, let me, let me just a second. Sorry, gentlemen. Okay, let me try again. Okay. All 
right, let's see now if it works. Um, okay, talking about a bit more detail about the services we offer. We offer pack and ship. We have a strong partnership with UPS, but we also work with FedEx and TNT, and in some countries also with uh, DHL. We serve many different uh, kinds of customers, and they have a dedicated slide about it later on. During the pandemic period, okay, thanks to the booming of uh, the e-commerce, we saw a great improvement or increase on the revenue generated by the micro logistics. So we are basically serving a lot of uh, small e-commerces, okay, with whom we provide the full services in terms of uh, warehousing, uh, packing, and obviously shipping. The printing and marketing solution is, um, is a quite interesting service we offer. We basically target the same customers we, that use our pack and ship services, okay, and we offer them a, a vast variety of different printing solutions, okay. Um, and finally, we have the domiciliation. Basically, we serve uh, both private and business customers. Could be a, a lawyer, could be an engineer, or could be a freelancer that doesn't want to uh, give to his uh, customers these uh, private address, and then they use our domiciliation services, okay, to uh, to receive a courier from. Uh, uh, mail from uh, from their uh, provider and customers okay and then they use our printing and shipping uh, services um, when we talk about the universe of our customers as i said before we have individual customers what we call so or small office home office professional and small and medium enterprises let me give you some concrete example of um, each categories when we talk about individual customers we refer to um, you know it could be a, a student who go abroad for an erasmus uh, period or just to study, and they have to ship their goods over there. It could be a migrant that has to ship some uh, document to his family in, uh, in his original country, okay? Or it could be a, a couple that go want to go to holiday and they want to carry the luggage. When it comes to ho Soho or small office, home office, we refer to basically freelance, okay? As I mentioned before, it could be a web designer, a graphic designer, okay? Or a freelance accountant, okay? Those people mainly use our domiciliation services, okay? And obviously they also use the, the printing and shipping services. And finally, we have the professional. When we talk about professional, I refer to lawyers, engineers, architects that again use our uh, stores to print and ship uh, documents they printed with us. And finally, we have the SMEs, small and medium enterprise. When we talk about SMEs, okay, what we do for them is to ship uh, their goods, Okay, and especially we focus on uh, samples and the spare spare part. Um, so this is uh, in a, in a few words the universe of uh, customers we serve. Uh, talking um, about our vertical approach because we focus very much uh, to try to get deeper and deeper. Okay, and when it comes to the moment to logistics, okay, what do we offer to the small retailers? Well, as I mentioned, the storage of their goods. Okay, we manage their orders. We organize their picking and packing, okay? We prepare all the documentation required for the shipping, okay? And in case there is some return, we manage it as well. Regarding our international development, I think we have been quite successful in the last uh, few years. Uh, currently, we have more than 1,000 center locations, okay? And we have a presence in more than 44 uh, countries. Um, let's review very quickly the few contracts we signed in the last, uh, in the last year. Okay, back in 2016, we signed a contract for uh, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. Okay, in uh, 2017, we signed a contract for uh, Ukraine, Greece, and Cyprus, all the countries of the um, Baltics, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, and uh, all the countries of the former Yugoslavia. In 2018, we signed a master franchise agreement for Hong Kong, for Romania, and for Hungary. And in 2019, we, start, we signed a few countries as well. Netherlands, Singapore, Egypt, and Belarus. So far in 2020, we are quite happy of the result we reached so far. We signed a master franchise agreement for, um, for Belgium, okay? And we are about to finalize a, uh, a, um, a, market, um, a master franchise agreement for all the countries of the Gulf region, okay? Where well, we are currently looking for a, a area licensee, okay? So if there is a... Uh, anybody interested to go deeper in this, uh, in this opportunity, please uh, get in touch with me and I will be very happy to, to give you a face-to-face uh, -face, uh, presentation, okay? And to introduce you to our uh, master lessons in the region, which uh, has an outstanding curriculum, okay? And we'll be very happy to guide you through the next, uh, through the next steps. 
Okay, talking about acquisition, okay, um, as a master licensee, uh, as, sorry, as a franchisor, we grow on a country by country basis through master license agreement, okay, but we also grow for acquisition. In 2017, we finalized the acquisition of two networks, PostNet and Alpha Graphics. PostNet is, a, is an American network with a 700 locations, most of them in the US and South Africa. Meanwhile, Alpha Graphic is a network of uh, graphic design, printing, marketing, and communication services with 300 locations, most of them in the US, and with some presence also in the UK, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Hong Kong. Thanks to this acquisition, we have added on top of the 1,000 location branded as MB, 1,000 more, okay? So at the moment, MB Worldwide uh, has a network of 2,000 location at worldwide level. And with the presence in 52 uh, countries. Um, one of the reasons why our business model uh, has been so successful also during the pandemic uh, period is because of the COVID 19. In this uh, sorry, it's because of the commerce. As you can see here, you, you, you can appreciate how the number of visits of um, e commerce web website has grown from January 2020 to June 2020, okay? So in the, the first six months of the year. We moved to 16 mil billions uh, of um, pages visited to almost 2022, which is a, an amazing growth. And obviously we took advantage of this situation uh, because of uh, uh, we serve uh, e-commerces, okay? And, uh, and among the e-commerce, especially we focus on small uh, retailers. This year we have some other statistics about how uh, the growth uh, we experienced at different, uh, in different regions in the world in terms of the commerce growth, okay? The Middle East and Africa, as you can see, as you can appreciate, is uh, the second one with a 20% uh, growth um, during uh, uh, the period, okay? Which is an amazing growth. And uh, yeah, some uh, some more information. Um, according to EB, IBM, okay, the pandemic has accelerated the consumer shift to e-commerce by five years. Okay, and this is uh, an amazing uh, speed, um, which again we took uh, advantage of. Um, another interesting data is that e-commerce is projected to grow by nearly 2020, uh, year over year in 20, uh, 2020. So an, another amazing. Um, result. And we are also experiencing a rise in um, what we call BOPIS, buy online pickup in stores. Okay. Um, in different countries, we already have in place uh, access point agreement where we, for instance, in, uh, in Malaysia, we have agreement with Lazada. Uh, and basically, our franchisees uh, deliver to final customers something like 300,000 parcels per month to um, people both online from, uh, from Lazada. Um, obviously, this is a, a, a great advantage for all of them because that generates traffic. And when a franchisee is able to cross-selling these services to the one that uh, uh, go to the store to pick up something to both online, uh, the results are, uh, are pretty good. Okay, 50, um, 557 million is the expected number of e-commerce users by 2024 in Europe. Okay, so all the trends related to the e-commerce, as you can see, okay, um, will support our business model. Why? Because again, we serve uh, uh, e-commerces, um, small retailers, okay, thanks to a 360 degree uh, service, okay, which allow not only to ship, but also to manage uh, the warehouse, uh, all the papers related to the shipment, okay? And in case of return, that part uh, as well. Um, during the COVID-19, okay, um, we, uh, our store, thanks God, were not closed because they were considered as essential business, okay? And thanks to that, okay, we have been able to take advantage 
of this uh, situation, okay, especially related, as I, said, as I mentioned a few times, to the rise of uh, e-commerce. During the COVID-19, we put in play the crisis, we put in practice many different initiatives, okay, to support our master licensee. Okay, the idea was to maintain the contact with all of them through conference call, regional meeting, virtual ones. By the way, we had one this morning, and uh, at the same time, okay, to offer to to the candidates interested in our master license opportunity online discovery days. Let me share with you a few screenshots of uh, such events. This is a uh, was a uh, an event uh, and a breakfast we organized with uh, uh, our master licensee uh, in May. That was attended by uh, all of them, and uh, was a pretty good one because apart from uh, from uh, from sharing the, the, the experience, the contents, and uh, some uh, some training, we also had the breakfast all together. Uh, this is a uh, the Michele is the candidate, the one on the uh, top on the left, who finally signed the the contract for uh, uh, for Belgium. Okay, is a very experienced Italian franchisee. Okay, that uh, also manage an area in France, and uh, this year decide to move to the next step, which was to take the master for. Belgium is supposed to open the pilot stores in uh, mid November in the city center of uh, Brussels. Okay, and we have great expectation on, uh, on, uh, on that. And these uh, are uh, other events that we organized, uh, always with uh, our, uh, our uh, master licensee. Uh, if I remember well, this was a regional meeting. Okay, we had uh, back in, uh, in July uh, with, the, with the master licensee from the north of, uh, north of uh, Europe. And uh, that's all from my side. And uh, thank you very much again for, uh, for your time. And if you have any question, I'll be very happy to, to reply. That's great. Thank you so much, Giuseppe. So um, we're going to move on to Carlos now. Uh, but before um, Carlos starts, just a reminder to everybody, if you would be happy to send some questions in, what we'll do is we'll reply to them live at the end of this session. Um, so, Carlos, over to you. Thank you very much, Carl. Hopefully you are hearing me well. Uh, we can hear you loud, loud and clear. Thank you very much. Great. Let me share my screen. Can you see that now? Yes. But not in presentation mode, right? Is that okay? Perfect, okay, good. Let's rock and roll then. Thank you very much, first of all, to uh, uh, Carl and uh, Giuseppe for, for your uh, uh, participation. It's really, it's really been uh, great talks. Uh, thank you for to Index and uh, to Franchise Talks for inviting uh, myself and allowing me to um, share some of the insights and some of the story of Jeff and why what makes uh, this brand so unique and so uh, revolutionary. So I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, the technology and innovation uh, are applied to the franchise world. Um, and let me start very quickly by sharing this uh, intro video which uh, it's only going to last for a minute and a bit but it's i think it's a very interesting thing very interesting way to start the talk at jeff we believe the world would be a better place if we bring neighborhoods back to life combining the best of both worlds we have created a franchise ecosystem with a unique value proposition where technology connects the physical and the digital worlds, transforming your business into a modern and successful investment. A globally recognized brand with more than 2,000 franchises in more than 40 countries. All through the Jeff app. One app where thousands of users enjoy our services on a daily basis, creating a community of loyal customers to the brand allowing us to create cross-selling promotions between verticals and have great impact attracting new customers. So all of our customers can live the good, good life. 
Look good, feel good, live good. Jack offers a solution system where our partners find everything they need to run their business and achieve their goals. With our map software, you can manage orders and have billing control. Metrics in real time, which will help us to offer our specialist support to improve your business without complications. Regardless of the vertical you choose, you can rest easy. All our the peace of mind, knowing that you will have all the necessary tools to achieve success. Excellent. Okay, very good. So uh, let me start by uh, explaining what is Jeff. So I thought that was a, a good introduction. An image, uh, an, an image really is better than a thousand words. So what is Jeff really? Well, Jeff is a global platform for well-being services, first of all. So uh, we have uh, different brands involved in this, in this company, different verticals, different uh, ways of, of uh, getting into, into this platform, so different uh, franchising opportunities. But the underlying, uh, the underlying layer for all of them is the the way we, we apply technology to franchising and, and uh, the way we make uh, life easier for both customers and uh, franchisees it what is what makes us different and is the uh, underlying common denominator for all the brands. As you saw in the in the video, our, our vision and our motto is uh, help our customers to live good, look good and feel good. So once again, different uh, opportunities for to cover different services for the customer market, all of them under the well-being, uh, the well-being platform and the well-being uh, idea. The way we deliver services is uh, very unique. We we have what we call the business in a box model, so uh, that makes it uh, really not necessary for our franchisees, whether whether they are big or small. We don't need them to have a previous experience in the industry. We provide all the tools and all the industry-specific know-how, uh, already proven success models internationally uh, at a global scale, and all of them have a different differentiated value proposition and a very clear identity. Everything uh, under one place. So for us, technology is, uh, as I was saying, a common denominator. And uh, the app is the umbrella under which everything uh, flows. So uh, through one single app, uh, a customer can access all the different brands, all the different services, and can interact and relate with, with uh, the company and the brands itself. Uh, we, we have a, a very uh, holistic ecosystem uh, driven by technology. Uh, we've talked about the app, but also the, the web is another another point of, of differentiation uh, and, and a point of contact from uh, customers to the brand. Uh, we are really very much a database company. So obviously, because we, we use the app and the web and, and digitalization and technology as a way of communication with our customers, we have the data, we understand their consumer patterns. We have a lot of automate, automatization in the processes. We can geolocalize them. We can we can uh, take the advantages of cross-selling, which is uh, a big big advantage. The customers of one brand can turn into customers of of another brand. Although each of the brands have a very differentiated and, and their own um, uh, product offering or service offering, but we can definitely take the advantages of cross-selling and, and uh, convert customers of one brand of of customers of the whole platform. And obviously, also this digitalization allows to manage in a much better and much more efficient way all the orders and the flow when it comes to having higher higher ticket counts, which is uh, something very important. So once again, uh, a business model which is very unique and which combines the best of both worlds, the offline and the online world. Uh, we believe in this uh, philosophy of the omni-channel approach. So it's not only digital, it's not only uh, 
you know, the physical world as it used to be until very recently is the combination of both which really provides the best, uh, the best result for all parties. So in this business in a box concept that uh, I was talking about before, we have uh, uh, several different areas that we uh, provide value. Uh, I've talked about the technology and the app, the web, the, the software that we have uh, developed for each of the brands for managing the stores and managing the business uh, KPIs and helping make what is uh, difficult, make it easy and make it very accessible for our, all levels of, of managers. Uh, we provide definitely a brand. A brand is very important. The, all the benefits of scale, of, of uh, uh, global size, economies of, of, of scale with suppliers, pricing, uh, knowledge, best practice sharing, all of that is uh, very significant and also makes us uh, apart from other options. Support from our specialists, uh, what we call our partners department, operations, training, that is, that is something that keeps us apart. Um, so once again, following the, the franchise model, but adding a, a important digital component and the uh, Jeff Academy, which we call Jeff Academy, our own uh, uh, university and remote e-learning center for all the different brands. Uh, together with uh, know-how base, uh, keeping operations and training up to date, uh, assistance, etc. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Uh, also a very, very important common denominator for all brands is uh, what we call smart investment concept, which is we, we push for very efficient investment models. Uh, we are a 100% franchise company. So for us, uh, our success is franchisee success. We don't have company owned units and uh, we really focus all of our resources and all of our uh, tools and teams in making our franchisees successful. Uh, both uh, operationally and financially, which is a, a result of, of the previous one. And all of that together creates an, an ecosystem, an ecosystem of, of uh, different well-being service options all under one roof, which is the Jeff uh, technology environment and the Jeff app, which we believe is a winning proposition. I'm uh, going to talk very briefly about all the all the different brands. Uh, Mr. Jeff is the, is the original brand where we started with we, it's as uh, close to 900 units worldwide. It's a laundry and dry cleaning option. Very, very heavily uh, laying on uh, the delivery service. Delivery, depending on, on, on the country and the option, uh, can be anywhere from 20 to 60 percent. This is this is really a, a very important uh, number which has grown since since the, the pandemic and COVID-19 for sure. It was already an increasing trend, but uh, this uh, new situation has just accelerated the digitalization trend. So uh, up to 60% or in some cases even more of the transactions happen through the app or happen online. So without the customer even needing to go to the, to the store and being able to be serviced uh, remotely or with uh, the delivery services, both uh, for the pickup and also for the uh, for the, uh, the delivery of the units of their clothes. Sorry. Uh, so this would be the customer flow um, with with just a couple of, of touches in the app. A customer can uh, select their services, uh, uh, request uh, the pickup at uh, the different times uh, or days that it's more convenient for for him or her. Uh, and then package all the all the clothes in in one single bag. Uh, the the service person would take them away, and the customer would organize the delivery back home at a specific date and time. Once again, according to convenience, convenience is key is, is the is the priority, and is an increasing factor that determines customer satisfaction and and, and customer needs. So, uh, Mr. Jeff would would. Uh, take the clothes back home for the customer with uh, properly clean and ironed and, and ready to put them just in the in, in the cupboard at home. So uh, really, the, the the need hasn't changed. The the need is still there is is getting your clothes clean and ironed. But the way that uh, these services are consumed are starting to to uh, to change uh, and change drastically. And, and uh, digitalization is the way to go uh, in, in in the current uh, trends. And that is what makes us really a, a very different, differentiated option.
Uh, second brand is Jeff Beauty, uh, all about hairdressing and uh, nail care services. Very much uh, with a tech layer uh, to take care of the turns, increase productivity, and uh, also uh, uh, make sure that all the management is as efficient as possible in terms of costs. Fijef is uh, our third brand. It, uh, it is involved in the uh, boutique fitness segment, which is where fitness is going towards lately. Uh, it's, it's all about group training. Uh, once again, fitness layer is, takes care of, of the management of the unit. Uh, the online booking of classes increases productivity and efficiency. Uh, make sure that costs are lowered to the maximum. Also acts as a payment platform. So uh, a, a winning concept with uh, yoga, Pilates, um, high-intensity interval training and functional training, all available for a, a very wide spectrum of, of the customer base. And finally, Jeff Relax is our last brand, which has incorporated to the Jeff family. It's, this is about uh, massage salons, all of them in a very de democratized way. So we are making uh, massages accessible to a, a layer of the customer base, which was uh, not really enjoying these services previously. And uh, we do that as, at a very reasonable price with a very high standard of, of quality. So uh, another winning concept, which is uh, starting to make a mark globally. Uh, but once again, some what makes Jeff different and what, what is a common denominator with all of these brands is the, the tech component, the software. All of these brands have a very, very strong software, uh, SA, uh, software as a service uh, solutions in terms of uh, how to manage their business units, uh, how to get the, the KPIs, uh, how to make, uh, as I was saying before, uh, what is a difficult management into, into something really easy and accessible for everyone. In terms of the partner support, uh, every, every franchisee, regardless of their size, receives a, a dedicated and assigned business consultant very early in the process to make sure that it has personalized service as well as can access uh, partner support agents uh, in, in a remote way, real time, 24 seven. So that really makes, uh, uh, allows them to be fully covered in terms of uh, solving problems, uh, assistance, etc. And for sure, the marketing area is another one where we provide a uh, very strong support for our franchisees, regardless of their size. Uh, we, we help uh, a lot with strategy. And once again, as, as I was telling before, in other areas, we blend the online with the offline worlds. We uh, uh, use all kinds of strategies and, and, and CRM uh, proposals to increase the frequency, uh, retention, activation, and upselling of our customers worldwide. And as I was saying also before, uh, promoting cross-selling between the different brands. On the training side, our uh, Jeff Academy for all of the brands provides pre and post opening uh, e-learning solutions with uh, specialized uh, courses, uh, making sure that we transfer the know-how and we uh, build capability in, in the stores uh, personnel at all the different levels of, of management or, or work. And finally, um, one of the one of the main uh, philosophies that the company has is restoring the connection between the the, the, uh, the neighbor the, the businesses the local businesses and, and the neighborhood consumers. So we, we believe in this omni-channel approach, uh, combining the digitalization and the scale of of brands and know-how uh, with the local service that always uh, a franchising experience provides. So uh, nothing replaces uh, that, that close personal touch and, and, and the feeling. And it's the combination of these two which, which makes the optimum solution. As, as uh, my colleague was saying before, in, in his own presentation, uh, sometimes the, the delivery order is started online, but then it is, it is uh, finalized on, on a remote manner or the other way around. So that combination of, of both formulas is and I'm taking the best of both worlds, the franchising and, and the physical stores together with digitalization is what uh, provides a overall winning proposition. And thanks to all these, all these differentiating uh, aspects, we have been able to, to uh, 
and go through a very short but very successful journey as a company. In only five years, we have reached what uh, the situation that we have today, which is almost 2,000 franchises sold uh, globally. Uh, we are already present in more than 40 countries in the five continents with a very strong presence in, in Latin America, but also presence in, in Europe, Africa, uh, northern part of Middle East, Southeast Asia. We still have a, a lot of room to cover, but uh, we are already we already have achieved a significant international size for uh, the age of our brand. And we've also uh, become very uh, recognized internationally in terms of uh, getting awards and, and accolades from the different uh, organizations and different publications, both in the from the technology world and also from the franchise world, from the startup world, uh, from the marketing expertise uh, side of, of, of things. So we have uh, already been uh, lucky enough to, to get all these uh, different recognition. Uh, and we we don't plan to stop here. We we plan to continue going forward. So uh, I would be definitely very very happy to uh, engage with any of the of you which might be interested in exploring options together for the future for any kind of market, any kind of size of opportunity. And uh, with all this, I just uh, have to say thank you very much once again to Index and uh, Frontier Stocks. No, and thank you, Carlos and Giuseppe, for two excellent presentations, um, both fantastic businesses as well. So um, inspirational to see from both. So we're now going to dive into the questions and answers. We've had a few questions submitted, and I'll try to share these out as evenly as possible. Um, we'll start with one that was originally directed to Giuseppe during his talk. Um, but actually, I believe, um, Giuseppe, Carlos, you could both answer this. Um, what do you think about the potential of franchising in the Middle East and by extension in North Africa? So Giuseppe, would you like to start with that one? Absolutely. I mean, in, in our development plans, the Middle East and the Gulf countries are a top priority. OK, we dedicate uh, important efforts in terms of uh, resources and time. Uh, last year, we attended a global uh, franchise trade show in, uh, in Dubai. OK, and uh, finally, as I mentioned, we have been able to sign a preliminary contract with a uh, entrepreneurs okay, in the region okay, that, uh, uh, with whom we should finalize uh, soon uh, the master franchise agreement. Um, we are currently looking for uh, area licensee in uh, all those uh, those countries. Basic an area licensee in our organization it acts as a let's say a master licensee in a uh, country level. So he has to open the pilot stores, he has to create a network, and he has to support his um, his uh, his franchises. Okay, so definitely we see a, a great potential in uh, in the Middle East. Okay, and we are also seeing a great potential in uh, in North Africa. Okay, we, one of the person in. Uh, our team is um, is French, okay. So it's dedicated to the search of master license street in that part of the of the, the world, okay. Taking advantage of his uh, language uh, language skills, okay. And uh, yeah, we definitely hope to to, to have some uh, master license in uh, in North Africa uh, as well. By the way, we already have a a, a master franchise agreement signed in Egypt, okay. And we hope to move uh, soon forward to see other other countries. Fantastic. And yeah, as you say, um, the ability to speak French definitely helps with North Africa. Um, I remember hosting a meeting for a delegation of Tunisian bankers about four or five years ago. And this was at the um, Franchise Expo in Paris, which became the Tunisian Franchise um, Association. So there is, um, there is certainly development in North Africa. And I see um, quite some potential there. Um, Carlos, do you have anything to add in respect of the potential for the Middle East and North Africa? Sure. Yeah, thank sure. you very much. Uh, we are definitely very interested in, in having a presence in, in Middle East, particularly in the Gulf region, where we are not present yet with any of our brands. However, we have very successful uh, market entries recently in Egypt. In uh, We have also presence in Turkey. Uh, we have uh, some uh, significant, relatively significant presence in terms of number of countries in northern Africa, so because we are in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, um, as far as I remember right now. So for sure, the Gulf region is is the next step, 
uh, that is a textbook market for for larger partners uh, versus other other regions of the world. Uh, the market is absolutely prepared and ready for technology concepts like ours, and we uh, we are already getting some interest uh, from, from this region, which is very encouraging, and we hope to finalize some kind of large deal uh, before the year end. Fantastic. So, Giuseppe, a question for you now. With the agreement that you signed in Egypt and now that you're closing one soon in the GCC, what advice would you give to other European brands looking to enter the region? Any tips or advice? Well, I, I think a uh, very important uh, a way to get closer to, to the local culture is, uh, is to have somebody to speak the language. Okay. So, I mentioned before that we have a person that speaks, um, which is French, that speaks obviously. French and is uh, pretty good for North Africa, but we also have a person, okay, who is Lebanese, um, his father is Lebanese, and that speaks uh, Arabic. So having this kind of profile definitely helps, not only in terms of uh, language barriers, but also from a cultural point of view, okay? And this is, uh, I think, is the most valuable tips I can give to uh, the European brands. Absolutely. And I'm actually going to answer a question that was raised to me now, um, that's very similar to this. And the question was, as you said, many countries, many languages and many cultures in Europe. The Arab world has similar characteristics, more or less. What are the first steps for any franchise or needs to look into coming into a new market um, su such as the Middle East? And you're absolutely right, Giuseppe. Language is key. Um, the other thing I would say just in relation to international expansion more generally is that you need to understand the language. Um, not just the verbal spoken written language but the cultural language and the way that things are done and in europe the way that business is done in france is very different from the way business is done in germany very different to the way it's done in england to italy etc we all have our own ways of doing things um likewise when you expand any um nation that you go to will have its own way of doing things um so a great thing if you if you don't have that expertise in house is to have both a consultant domestically who has experience of going abroad but also a contact in the region that you're looking to go to so that they can work together to make sure that your brand is translated um a common one for us english speakers is for example the uk to america we both say the same words, but we mean very different things. So the next question is going to be for Carlos. Um, Carlos, in your view, how is innovation now shaping the franchising industry? And um, how can your experience that you've had so far be transferred to the Middle Eastern market? Yes, well, innovation is, is, uh, is key. So, uh, I mean, we are just, uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, uh, to see and understand how fast technology is, is moving. Uh, it's, it's, it's moving faster and faster in terms of novelty and, and new uh, devices. You know, we see this with, with smart smartphones and with all kinds of, of technology. So being, being uh, able to, uh, to have a constant innovation, I would say, rather than innovation every once in a while, is what companies need to need to have to, to be able to survive in today's world in the long term. So having a, a, a constant uh, investigation, adaptation to markets, to technology, it's, it's not only technology, it's also how, how markets uh, evolve and how consumers evolve because uh, uh, the needs are the same but or, or tend to be the same, but the ways to solve them is what is what is changing right now so i mean obviously millennials have uh, different consumer habits and trends than uh, older older people in other generations um, they have the same needs but they solve them in different ways uh, and, and that sure. is because of the technology uh, component for sure no problem. so giuseppe um now for you in the um the current covid situation um, but also the development of e-commerce and technology how important in your opinion is digital marketing in the franchising sector is the marketing so far uh, digital marketing the, the digital, 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 digital. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. absolutely <laughs> 
is, is, a, is a very hot topic, okay? We, we strongly believe in uh, digital marketing. Actually, we have a very proactive approach with all our new master SNC and franchisee. As soon as we sign a master franchise agreement, okay, one of the first things we do together with them is to prepare an online marketing plan for both the pilot stores, okay, and their retail network down the field for the sales of licenses in the country. This is something that we do all together, which means to 